Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and my homeboy, my homie, my good friend, David Boyce of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks, author of the book and the YouTube channel. David Boyce, welcome back to the program. Steve, it's always great to be back. So doing everything I can, uh, learning as much as possible. Uh, thanks for a, another invitation to to talk about a Protestant from the Midwest exploring Utah, yeah. uh, really for the first time. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your experiences because David, of course, many of you uh, saw when he did the general conference uh, video earlier this year, but he didn't really get to explore Utah that much. And so he's since made two trips and they actually have an upcoming trip later this month. And we're going to miss each other by a couple days because I'm heading out there. When you guys watch this episode, it's most likely going to be on Friday, December 8th is when I'm releasing this. I'll be in Utah. And hopefully you will have seen me at the December 7th meetup at Crown Burgers in downtown Salt Lake City near Temple Square. Uh, so either I'm going to post this Thursday or Friday. I don't know. Either way, not sure. Everything's just like, ah, you know, everything with the planning and everything like that. It's pretty wild. And these trips are well worth it uh, because every time I get out to Utah, it really is a wonderful thing. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you've done a few videos. You've actually did uh, an episode where you went to the uh, temple um, tour in Bentonville, Arkansas, which I think, right, that's corporate headquarters for Walmart as well. And uh, and then you just talk about your first experience going through a temple. And then, we're, and then this is cool because David has then done other temple tours that we're going to talk about. And he's got an upcoming episode in the about the Orem Temple, which we're going to do a special preview. Folks, just so you know, this is a dual episode that's going to be on both Mormon Book Reviews and my new YouTube channel, uh, the Utah uh, Internet, or excuse me, yeah, U, <laughs> Utah Interfaith Forum. Here it is on the screen share. Right now we have 155 subscribers. Just getting this thing started. You know, I don't have expectations this is going to be like a huge channel, but I think it's going to be an important channel where we can have different conversations. And so I want you all to check out uh, this. And we're actually going to have bonus, a bonus, 10 minute bonus coverage exclusive to the Utah Interfaith Forum. That we, after we're done taping this, David and I are going to do a special little segment that's only on UIF. So make sure you're liked and subscribed and have your notification buttons turned on. All right, here we go. So, David. Um, How's it been taking these trips to Utah and then exploring, like I said, the Bentonville, maybe talk about visiting your first temple experience and then just talking about your trips in Utah as well. I mean, it's fabulous. It's just wonderful, the stuff you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a long journey uh, to even get to this point. Uh, but I, I know with doing uh, the 52 churches in 52 weeks, by far the most popular visit uh, was week 47 uh, when I drove out to Salt Lake City. Uh, as a Protestant to attend general conference for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, um, you know, I've, I've kind of mentioned it's like it was very eye opening just to see uh, the stark contrast of everything that was going on inside the conference center versus what was going on outside the conference center. But because everything was so fast, it was like a blur. So I needed to like I didn't get a, much of a chance to really explore Utah. Like my my local missionaries were telling me all about the things I needed to visit in Utah, like swig, like I needed a dirty soda, needed to try some of the cookies like crumble and crave, uh, crown burger, like you're going to be having with the future meetup. Um, I haven't with, I think you mentioned that you like the pastrami with crown burger. Mm -hmm. I think I tried a little bit of it. It's a little bit different for me because I don't much I don't eat much pastrami, but. Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I don't know that pastrami. That's that's the real deal in my book, man. I'll tell you. Well, what's yeah. your favorite burger at Crown Burgers? What do you like to get? Oh, uh, I don't even remember what I what I purchased. I try to be like for me, like when I eat, I, I try to be very simple. Don't I don't go too crazy with it. Uh, but yeah, it's just the different types of wait, with the dirty soda, with all these gourmet. Okay, cookies. so a dirty what is a dirty soda? Okay, so what I've learned is they typically like it's it's like typical soda but then they're adding in other type of ingredients and creamer in it okay so it just tastes so much better huh. so steve next time you're out there you're going to need to try dirty soda as well yeah okay now see now back in the midwest we had what was called suicides remember you ever have a suicide where you had no. you 
But well, so I think it might be even a Chicago thing. The suicide is where you you go to the fountain drink thing and you you take a, 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 a put a little bit of each pop in your thing. So you just have all a mix of like five or six different pops that we call those suicides. So I, I was thinking maybe it was kind of a similar thing. But this they had other ingredients to it. Sounds very fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so add that to the list, Steve. Okay, I'm adding it to the list right now. Okay, suicides. All right. <laughs> okay so you experienced yeah. uh, the the culture this is what this is the key thing now and of course you had fry did you have fry sauce with your fries oh yes of course fry sauce as well so um it, it's so different like it's like why isn't fry sauce in other regions it's such a regional utah based thing i don't understand why it's not in more places yeah it's it's just its own little world that's really cool right. And uh, so, yeah, and that's that's the cool thing. So you got to experience the the culture of Utah, driving around. As a matter of fact, the, one of your trips, you were supposed to get to the St. George Temple, but what happened? You were going with Rick Bennett of Gospel Tangents, and something happened. Talk about that. Yeah, so um, I was so curious uh, the last time I was out in Utah to go to St. George, you know, this pioneer era temple. And I, I've had a lot of requests um, from viewers to go out there. So for me, like I, I drive, you know, crazy distances. So four hours, two hours back, it didn't, it didn't sound like it'd be too bad, but uh, interstate 15 in Utah is something different. It's, um, so Rick and I, Rick from gospel tangents, we were driving out there and he was going to be my tour guide. And we got, we passed through Beaver, and then I think we got, I think it's called Cedar Cedar City. Anyway, uh, we got there, and we got stuck in a traffic jam on a Monday morning because apparently, like, we were seeing helicopters flying above us, and we were just stuck and kind of figured, all right, this will probably be over in a few, you know, 20 minutes tops. But it got to an hour, and we were still stuck in traffic. And from what later we understood is there was a high speed uh, police pursuit of a suspect. And apparently they, they shut down all the interstate, they shut down the roads so they could deal with this one individual to the point where they actually had, I guess they had to smoke bomb him out. So it got to be so late in the day, um, we had to turn around because we were, if we had gotten to St. George, we would turn right back and I, was going to miss my flight right right so unfortunately there was still a big part of me that wanted to visit again so i was able to to visit the saint george open house for the very last day just so i can kind of see like, like this historic you know 19th century type of temple that was built with uh brigham young having a, a huge hand in well that's fascinating and of course there was you had said something there were like tens of thousands of people there for the final day and you got a personal tour uh yeah. is that correct i mean that's 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 a real privileged place to be you know to be able to have access to to, to that kind of thing how did that make you feel uh it was such a blessing so humbling um you know it's it's like i don't deserve that um one of the, the tricky one of the weird strange things with doing uh you know the youtube with the 52 churches in 52 weeks um i, I do some of the churches um, or, or some of the church videos with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And there's a, it's humbling to see the response to the videos um, and just the humility from church members. And I try to to live by the golden rule, treat others the way that you want to be treated. And to have that reciprocated to me uh, has been such a blessing. So when I did uh, the Bentonville, Arkansas Temple visit, I just walked in, you know, I'm, I'm not special. Um, just get the, you know, the tour and go from there. And the response on YouTube um, with the views, the comments, the likes, uh, that was not something that I expected. And so to see that translate to a tour, like with Orem and St. George, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things. It's just, uh, you know, can't believe it. Yeah. And so, was the Bentonville, Arkansas, we're going to get back to Utah and this culture, but was the was the Bentonville, Arkansas temple, was that the first temple you went through? Was yes. That, okay. Yeah. And and uh, so just maybe just talk about, and of course you have your video where you did talk about it, but maybe just talk about 
your experience going into a sacred space for Latter-day Saints. Yeah. Uh, in, in the video I mentioned, it's like I felt like I was like walking into the twilight zone, you know, as a, a Protestant, you know, I'm not a recommended member or anything like that. Um, to walk in for the first time was very different. But in the video, I kind of mentioned where it's like, well, wait a minute, maybe maybe I'm walking out of the twilight zone uh, just due to uh, the church and their emphasis on so many good things that is done through the church, especially with the focus on families, especially when it comes to building a relationship with Christ. Um, one thing that I didn't, but with my viewers, one of the recommendations I had was, well, we we really wish you had a personal tour because there's a lot of rooms that I just kind of walked through and didn't really understand or grasp the context of everything inside. So that's where some of these personal tours with the Orem Temple and then the St. George Temple um, really helped to help me to give context to me, uh, but also to find new appreciation. So I hope in these future temple visits um, with these videos, it's going to provide that a little bit more, uh, just as I gain more of an understanding of it all. Yeah, and just to be clear, folks, just for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, because a lot of people are like, well, how are, uh, is David able to get into temples? Because obviously they're closed to the public and only people with temple recommends are able to come in. Well, what they do is be when they build a new temple or they uh, do a remodeling of a temple, like they did the Washington, D.C. temple uh, uh, last year, is they actually open it back, uh, open these places, this, these sacred spaces to the public and take them through through that. So just to be clear that this is not, you know, we, you weren't granted special privileges. It was one of those things where yeah. you know, it's, it's open to the public for, for a period of time. And the church opens up their doors to the community to let them walk in and explain to them, you know, these, you know, kind of give them a general idea of what goes on in the temples and stuff like that. And of course, folks, on February 7th of this year, uh, the temple, the, they did announce a lot of different changes to the temple ceremony. Uh, I remember flying in the day, it, the day it happened. And remember, I remember February 7th because that's the day I, one of my, my first trip to Utah this year was on February 7th. And I remember talking to, it was the talk of the town. People were excited. People were, I even talked to people who had just been through the temple and they really appreciated the ceremony. They, they feel like it's a, an improvement. Um, so it's just really interesting to be able to kind of, be able to, uh, ex you know, not not that we've been through the temple or anything like, or not that we know exactly what the ceremonies are, and of course all that stuff's out there. But the key thing is, it's just this is an important place for for Latter Day Saints, and this is a sacred space for them. And when in, in one of the things that you had talked about in your general conference video, which I thought was so fascinating, was how you contrasted the uh, the beauty of the Tabernacle Choir singing. And then juxtapose the images of the evangelical protesters holding their signs. And, I, you know, this, this is a message to the evangelicals out there that think that they're accomplishing anything um, by doing these. Now, now, you had said, too, David, there were some good people there. They weren't trying yeah. to be disruptive. They were trying to be friendly. Well, that, that's fine. I think it's good to try to have conversations. They, were, they, kept, they kept a distance from street preachers. So it's like yeah. they did not want to have anything to do with that. So there were... There were enough. It's just, you know, you you see, you hear the loudness. And I, I think that's one thing that I took away, especially with these temple visits, is like each temple is supposed to be a light. It's supposed to be this beacon, this house of the Lord. And it's like one, one thing as a Protestant that is very, you know, different to me is, you know, everyone kind of puts on the white clothing. At first, that was very weird to me to hear. But now I understand, no, it's like it, it's this. It's this sacred part. It's this essential part of God's plan where it's like, you know, you may have, you know, coming from, you might be a multimillionaire, but when you're walking in, you're equal to every single soul that's inside. Like, it's an equality thing. And I, I think th that's something that, um, that I'm understanding much more, gaining more appreciation because there is... I, I, one thing that that I, I took away from this with these two visits was um, Elder Bednar and Elder Bednar. Um, I, there's a talk that he gives that stems from an April 2000 talk from President Boyd Packer. Um, so I guess it was from April 2000 and they open up the conference center. It was this amazing facility everyone's talking about just how beautiful this is but president packer 
kind of talked about this parable, this parable of a merchant. And he had searched all over the world for one of the, the finest pearls that you could possibly find. And he found one, but because it was so beautiful, he wanted to put it in a box. He didn't want it to, you know, be ruined or stolen or anything like that. But then as soon as, so he found the best carpenter that made this amazing treasure box or box in general. And suddenly the people were so amazed by the box, like they didn't appreciate the pearl. And from what I'm, learned from these temple visits is yeah the box the temple it's beautiful it's amazing but the spirit of it beauty of it is inside with christ christ is the pearl and i think that was one thing that i never i think not just the church of jesus christ latter-day saints but any church in general um catholic protestant whatever uh can can find appreciation in that because when you're going to church when you go into these amazing basilicas or cathedrals or temples or anything the main focus should be on Jesus Christ yeah that amen to that and uh that's the thing you know and of course you and I have had this conversation before and I've talked about this is that the privileged position that you and I are both in is that as we engage all the different uh, facets of the restoration, all the different groups, all the different people, all the people who are a product of the Book of Mormon, the product of Joseph Smith, and the product of the restoration, is that we have the unique position, unlike those protesters outside who are holding their signs and not con not contributing anything uh, to the uh, actual bridge bu building uh, Prince of Peace process, right, of trying to have be, commu communicating with each other, you and I got to be exposed and get to see the pearls of the restoration. And once you see them, you can't unsee them. Maybe speak to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's, it's biblical, too, because like our tongues can be used as swords. And that's very, very dangerous to do, uh, especially with what, what you see from those that are very, uh, that, that street preacher mentality, you're going to hell you're wrong. And I, I think especially right now, um, like especially like Christian YouTube in general, like there's there's a, a pollution right now. There's a kind of like a witch hunt uh, for prosperity preachers and, you know, false prophets and everything like that. And it, it's getting to be, um, it's getting very dangerous, very toxic. And, and I hope with my channel, with your channel, with Interfaith Talk, um, and just trying to understand and do more, be a light for others. And I, I think that that's something that is getting missed. And I just would hate to see uh, more negative influence uh, out there. So hopefully what we're both doing, um, you know, it's something that is helping other people's lives and just understand, build, have that bridge building as well yeah yeah i agree and i think it's so important in today's society to do this and this is the, the problem i have with a lot of these so-called uh apologists and street preachers and a lot of them do a lot of street stuff as a matter of fact some so many of these christian apologists are doing their debates and stuff like that but there are also many of these are are, are, are on the forefront of of these protests and holding signs and you know i have to tell you there are a few exceptions but and there's some really good people that uh, work in the Christian apologist world. I will, I'll grant you that. But for the most part, most of these people who attack me, by the way, and slander me and spread lies about me, um, I look at that and I say, I don't see any fruits. And Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. And so I see these pharisaical people who are doing their religious stuff, but I don't see any Jesus there. And I'm very hurt by that because these people are representing themselves as being evangelicals. And unfortunately, a lot of these people are misrepresenting Mormonism to an evangelical audience. And I think that's sad, too. And again, I have disagreements, of course, with Latter-day Saints and their theology. And we've discussed them openly. OK, do it all the time. I'm, now, I'm not without criticism here and there. And I'm not with critiques. I'm, I'll do that. But my goodness, guys, when you're out there doing what you're doing and mocking these people and their faith and their values, I just feel like it's not very Christ-like. It's not very Christian. And it really calls into, into, into my mind 
why are you even doing this? And to me, they're doing it because they're operating in the flesh. They're operating with the, the natural man is in control because they're doing it for their own ego. They get a thrill out of yelling and screaming at people telling them they're going to hell. But it's because they're so they're in a place. I don't, I, I'd like to. So many of them are just in a, a very they're in a place, a very toxic place. And they really honestly think that by acting like that is Christ like. And this is the thing. And I'm going to have you comment on this, too, is when Kyle, Dr. Kyle Bashir's wonderful guy, assistant pastor at a mega church in Mobile, Alabama, a region rat, just like me from Northwest Indiana. He had said, you know, so often these Christian apologists and these people holding these signs say, well, Jesus turned over the tables in the temple. Jesus was a fighter. He was whipping those people and this kind of stuff. He said the key thing was is that Jesus did not go to Samaria, to their temple, and do it. He did it to his own people's temple. So the question I have for you guys is, why are you going and turning and, and trying to do this when Jesus did not do this either? He did not turn over the tables in the Samarian, with the Samaritans' temples. He did it in Jerusalem. And so to me, I think we need to do, you and I, if we're going to turn over any tables, it has to be done in our own camp. Because I really think that the toxicity and a lot of the negativity that we see spewing from these people is really a problematic thing about American modern American evangelicalism. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox now. <laughs> Preach, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe just talk, speak to that a little bit. Your experience, well, this is, again, when you first yeah. started your channel, you were more like a little bit more like uh, judgmental. And then you've kind of learned yeah. as you've grown and I think you've spiritually grown. You realize that, oh, that's not the way to do it. And just having genuine conversations and, and stuff with, with your book and then later your YouTube channel. Maybe just talk about maybe your spiritual growth and the way how you've changed your approach yeah. to with groups that are different than you. I, I think that's a great point because when I started 52 churches in 52 weeks, especially with the book, like I, I came from a very much more judgmental approach, um, especially in the book. Um, but like my very first Catholic visit um, I was extremely judgmental about that whole visit. And over time, as I've seen more churches, it, it's, it becomes when you, for me now, I've documented over a hundred different church visits and to see all the differences out there, it doesn't make me feel like I know more. It makes me feel like I know less. It's a much more humble approach because and the only, the only thread that I can really connect with everything is Christ and us and that relationship. So like there, there can be differences in theology, obviously, and the different doctrines and interpretations. Um, but the more people that I talk to, the more eyeballs that I see, the more humble that I get, and the more that I... I hope that I'm, I'm displaying love and that has been a process that has not been something that came overnight. Um, and I, I've mentioned this in other videos where I, I feel like uh, with my visits to not just the church of Jesus Christ, of Latter-day Saints, but also community of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ with the Bickerton tonight group with a Strangite church. Uh, those were some of the best fruits that I've seen from any other church. And as a result, it's forced me to really ponder about, okay, what, what is this Book of Mormon? Um, especially when we did the Book of Mormon rally with Patrick McKay, um, you just, just the testimonies. Um, when, when we were sitting in, in his, um, in his home and you you mentioned to me, hey, you know, David, you know, we probably need to take off. It's like I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave because I'm hearing all these testimonies, and it wasn't necessarily about the theology. It was about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I hope, you know, especially with all these church visits, I've had a lot of people, you know, if if I had had some critics where it's like, oh, you know, get your head in the Bible, you know, you don't need to be visiting all these different churches. But at the same point, it's like, look at all this community. Look at all. And on top of that, especially with, um, I, I did a recent visit to the 10th Ward Chapel, uh, just blocks away from Temple Square. Mm -hmm. And that was my first real Utah church visit. Okay. To be a part of the history in there. Like mm -hmm. I was reading uh, President Gordon Hinckley, who actually attended that church when he turned 12 years old. 
And I guess he had just become a deacon. And to read his testimony when he first visited and just all these strong men singing hymns to Jesus Christ, like you don't really see that so much in today's day and age. And I feel like, like we need to understand a little bit more church history to know where we came from. That's true. And I think that was a fascinating episode. So yeah, so we, so so your pre, your most recent episode uh, dealing with Latter Day Saints has to do with your visit to the Pioneer Tenth Ward uh, Chapel, and that's a great episode. I, I recommend that. And folks, now then, what we're going to do is David is going to talk about his experience visiting the Orem Temple, but we're going to uh, be, before we I let you go because what we're going to do, folks, we're going to have bonus coverage that you can only get at the Utah Interfaith Forum. And this will be bonus to preview his next episode, which this episode will come out a little, a couple days before. So most likely we're releasing this on Friday, December 8th, and then probably Sunday, December 10th. I'm, I, I suspect that will be when you'll be releasing the Orm Temple visit. Is that correct? That's what I'm, that's what I'm shooting for right now. Yep. Okay. So hold on real quick. Let's just go back. So you got to go to the Utah Interfaith Forum YouTube channel and make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have all your notifications on. And so this episode is being released on both MBR and UIF, but this bonus coverage is only going to be seen on UIF. And I want to uh, get people to uh, subscribe to that channel because I do feel like that it can be an important work. I feel like what we are doing with your channel, your book, your journey, and similarly with me, is that we are doing interfaith in action, which is one of the terms I like to use, interfaith in action. We don't just talk about it. We get our hands dirty and we do it. Mr. David Boyce, thank you for coming on. And, and don't forget, switch over to the Utah Interfaith Forum, and we're going to have some bonus coverage. David, thanks for coming back on the program today. Appreciate it, Steve. And yeah, I'm uh, going to make one more visit out to Utah. I don't know where I'm going to be visiting for Sunday morning. So if you have any suggestions, mm. recommendations, make sure to leave those in the comments. Uh, I, can, I can only pick one for Sunday morning, but uh, I would love to hear some ideas. That's great. Okay, so folks, leave comments. Tell us what you think about the conversation. Uh, I always have a blast with David whenever he comes on. It's always a great uh, privilege to have somebody of David's stature, who when he first came on my program, I was bigger than, and now he's bigger than me, which is fine, just as it is with Jeff McCullough. He, had, he was smaller than me, and now he's bigger than me. And then we have our homeboys over at the uh, Stick of Joseph, who are really doing great work. I'm I, I'm really privileged to many of you. The first time you've ever in, met these people was through Mormon Book Reviews, which speaking of with, if you want to, we do have a merch store, mormonbookreviews.com, where you can get hot chocolate mugs, hats, and all sorts of things. Uh, also, you can, if you want to financially support the channel, we have links for Venmo, PayPal, as well as Patreon. And I want to thank everybody who is financially supporting the channel. And uh, don't forget, go to UIF for bonus coverage. But remember, the most important thing is this, folks. Remember, all the voices of the restoration will be heard here on Mormon Book Reviews.